Jesus didn't just die for your sin. And he didn't just die for my sin. And he didn't even just die for the sins of those who would repent, who would confess, who would believe and would desire forgiveness. The scripture says that he died not only for all sin, but he also died for all sinners. Which means that every single person that has ever and will ever walk on earth is one repentance away from redemption. Because all of our sin has already been paid for. It's a matter of us receiving the gift that has been given. Atonement is available to all of us. And so what we begin to celebrate on Easter is the reality that the death of Jesus was not just to forgive my sins. Like we say it all the time. He died for my sins. And I know we want to make it personal, but there's a reality that we have to understand that he died for all sins. Mine are included in what he did, but he did it for all of us. He did it for the people who have harmed us. He did it for the people that we despise, the people we overlook. There is no one that has ever done anything that he did not include in his death and offer forgiveness. Sometimes that's too much for us, right? The idea that Jesus died for the oppressor and the oppressed. That he died for the one that works the injustice, not just those who suffer the injustice. Sometimes we look so closely at the downtrodden that we forget we're all downtrodden. That we forget that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. That his desire for all of us is equal in all of his love. The scriptures are so clear. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. God wills that none would perish. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, Paul writes to Timothy, God's desire is that all or everyone would be saved. I think the question we come to today is why? Why is it that God wills that none would perish? And why is it that God holds us all in this equal position, both equal in our condemnation before Christ and equal in the opportunity to be saved by Christ? There's only one answer to that. We could talk about covenants and blood and sacrifice and all of those things, but the reality of the gospel is this. It's because God loves us. Because he created us in his great love and he created us for his great love. That his desire is that he would shed his love abroad upon all of us. And so while sin separates us from God, it has never separated God's love from us. And so when we created a chasm, he bridged it. When we ran from him, he came to us. When we were his enemies, he chose to make a way for us to not just be his children, but even to be his friends. And so we can't talk about the resurrection until we've understood Jesus' death. That it's not just for sin, it's from love. The one verse we probably all share at least some memorization of is John 3.16. And what does it tell us? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. So it doesn't say man was so sinful that he had to send his son or man was so broken that he had to send his son. It says God so loved the world that he decided to deal with our sin. It wasn't that we were so far off. It was that he had stayed so near that his plan had never changed in his heart or in his mind. And so remember this as we celebrate the resurrection. It's all from love. It's all for love. Our sin is never the impotence of a God's movement. He moves by his love and he moves for his love. 